Hi, we are Team Transcendence from Hua Chong Institution, Singapore. I'm Kai Song, and these are my teammates Jing Heng and Justin. Individually, we have been participating in Robocup Cup Soccer Open since 2017, but came together as a team last year. Being one of the few schools without a robotics coach, everything we have learned and created were all completely done by ourselves. As such, we are very excited to share about the many new innovations of our robot. Our robot is built with a few overarching design principles in mind. Some of the key concepts include having a low center of mass, which makes the robot more stable and reduces skidding, as well as having an even weight distribution that ensures all the wheels have the same downwards force acting on them, giving more accurate motion. As for specific components, our dribbler has a relatively simple but effective design. It can spin the ball at over 2000 RPM, and it is able to hold the ball even when the robot is moving quickly. It also has a spring suspension system, hence it is able to pivot upwards to absorb the shock of fast incoming balls. We also improved the way we fabricated our mirrors. In the past, we used heat molding techniques which did not yield accurate results. Thus, we tried out making a mirror from lading an aluminum tube followed by multiple rounds of wet sanding and finally polishing. The final image produced by our mirror was a major improvement compared to the previous years. We use surface mounted components on a printed circuit board designed in Autodesk Eagle in order to save space. These are fabricated using JLC PCB and the design files are up on our GitHub. In order to get our robot's directions and bearings, we use the Alaflu NXP Precision IMU and run sensor fusion algorithms on a separate microcontroller. We have tried other IMUs with integrated sensor fusion solutions like the PNO055, however, it had a problematic I2C implementation. Others, like the CMPS11, were simply too unstable for our use. We chose to use the TINZ as our microcontroller due to its fast speed and small footprint. We required a fast speed for future expandability as we explore different strategies or implement computationally expensive localization algorithms in the future. In order to achieve a more efficient task parallelization, we relegated low-level tasks such as sensor reading to multiple STM32F1 sub-microcontrollers. Some unique sensors we used include a mouse sensor to track the movements of our robot and for localization, a Bluetooth module to communicate between robots and to debug the robots via our phones, and a new pixel ring to debug the robot via showing the ball direction. Now moving on to the software of our robot, particularly the Respi, we opted for Arch Linux ARM as our OS due to its versatility and lightweight build. As for the programming language, we chose C++ after realizing the problems with Python. Some problems are the global interpreter log restriction and its slower computational speed. For the choice of camera, we opted for RPI Camera V1 as it allowed us to capture full FOV at 90fps as compared to 40fps for V2. To exaggerate the colors of the ball and the objects on the field, we can manually tune the camera properties such as the saturation, white balance, and brightness. With the V1 camera, the time taken to capture an image is 11 milliseconds. The image processing adds on an additional 5 milliseconds. Thus, the latency of our object detection is approximately 16 milliseconds. We have also implemented a dynamic priority system that allocates computational resources according to instructions from the main microcontroller. Products like Pixie and OpenMV inspired us to create a debugging interface, and thus, we created our own GUI. Above and beyond what the interfaces of related products could offer, we added more features such as double screen for debugging and a notepad. Data from image processing as well as the mouse sensor, TOF and light sensors are combined together using sensor fusion algorithms. This is essential in aiding our attack and defense strategy while ensuring the robot is within the boundaries of the field. We have also created a 2D simulation of the game using Python. Most of the basic movements of our robot is captured within the simulation, like in things such as the dribblers, go aiming and shooting, out detection, attack and defense, roll switching, and even the use of a back dribbler flick. While development of this software is still in its early stages, we hope to eventually create a programmable API to control the robots so that other teams can use this as a tool for developing their strategy. Thank you for watching our video. Do check out our poster in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to stay updated with our shenanigans, subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram at Puzotics. <laughs>